Hello there, it's me Jeanette. How are you? Hope you've been amazing. In today's video, I'm sharing a quick uh, envelope mini album that I literally, well not literally threw together, but I worked on this on a very short notice. I got the idea at the last minute, which is kind of usual for me. So I wanted to do, I made this mini album, sorry, for my uh, workplace bestie. Her name is Kath and she is leaving us and going back to uni to finish her degree. So really proud of her, but sad for me because <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just really clicked with her. I am old enough to be her mother, but we just really got along really well. And so I made this mini album for her and it's made out of envelopes and I will show you how to make the base in another video. Um, I started this <laughs> this mini album during my lunch break so that's why um, there's no tutorial for how to make the base yet so I made started this on my lunch break and then um, when I got home I finished finished it up so the base is envelopes with the little triangle tops I guess that's the best way to describe it the the closures are triangles and so these fit really easy together and you just basically glue them you need about six envelopes and you just glue them and they close really easily and I will show the tutorial on how to make the base very soon so I just wanted to add some pictures to this little album so I printed out the very few pictures that I have with Kath which is really sad and I really think that we need to uh, create more memories and we will soon <laughs> but yeah so I'm including those photos that I have of us I just printed them on regular copy paper and then I have all these bits and these are all scraps leftover scraps from work projects and also scraps from my own personal stash and I tried to pick colors that were a little bit compliment like mostly complementary colors so you'll see a lot of pastels of course and peaches and light grays and blues and so I have some die cuts that I want to include. I stamped these feathers and fussy cut them and then I have these little wooden letters that spell out cath so I'm going to use that for the um, front cover. When you're making a mini album for somebody it's always great to try to add personalized touches like their name, uh, spelling out their name, or adding their initials somewhere and also, of course, including pictures of them. It just makes it more special. Also, mini albums, not only should they be personalized, but they should be interactive in some way, whether that's, you know, adding a built-in pocket that you can fill with, uh, like you can put a picture inside or include a handwritten note and tuck it in one of the pockets. What's great about the envelope mini album is that you can, I mean, you have automatic pockets with the envelope, so it's really easy to just uh, tuck in, slide in some goodies, add some photos, and it's really fun. Like, it's just interactive and adds more, what's the word I'm looking for? Not finesse, it's like pizzazz. It adds pizzazz to your project. And the recipient will be really excited to have something that's so thoughtful and interactive and just fun to look through. Now, when you're working on the layouts for your mini album, I find, well, for myself, it's easier to work with colors that are similar throughout the book, throughout the album. So that's why I picked um, very similar and complementary colors like uh, light blues and peaches and grays so that that way your whole album is more cohesive. It looks more unified, I guess, throughout to have those similar colors. Obviously not every page has to have every single color that you're using. So, you know, you don't have to have gray and peach and blue and gold on every page, but you can use a combination and a variation of those colors throughout your layouts. And it, it really just helps um, with the theme of the album, the feel of the album, and also it just makes it more cohesive as well. But then again, <laughs> it could be a question of color confidence. So like how comfortable you are using colors in your layouts and in your projects. I tend to stick to pastels and teal, like 
you know, blues and peaches and grays because I know those colors and like light greens because I know those colors pair well together. And I really love, <laughs> love those colors. Like they're my favorite colors, but some people are very good. They have really good color confidence and they're able to use different kinds of colors and mix and match. And they know the color wheel, like the back of their hand and they're just really good at that. So I would love to know if you have a moment how do you feel like what's your color confidence level one being you are you know you stick to black and white because you are very confident with using color and 10 being you are a pro i would love to know what your color confidence rating is for yourself <laughs> Now, if you don't have very high color confidence, no worries, I'm right there with you. One thing that I've mentioned in previous videos that really helps is to look up color palettes. So there are some beautiful images on Pinterest if you just search color palettes or also, you know, just type it right into your Google address bar and you'll get some great inspiration. And what I love about these color palettes is that you always find a palette that you never imagined could possibly work. And it's just amazing these colors that work together that you know you never would have imagined in your head that these colors would go together but they do. And so it's great to take those color palettes for as inspiration and to incorporate the colors in a palette into a project of some sort. I think it really helps you grow as a crafter using those color palettes for assistance in case you are lost and you feel like you can use more color in your layouts then definitely go the route of searching i mean looking up color palettes i think it's really helpful so with these photos i'm just matting and layering them using two different pattern uh, cardstock so i really love the gray it's very fancy and ornate and then i'm just layering my photo onto this blue cardstock navy blue cardstock with this tiny white pattern and i don't know i felt like it just really worked together like the two patterns paired really well together and also it just gave me um it just gave me a nice border for my photo. So I'm just gluing this down and then I'm going to tuck it in to the pockets and I'll be done with this portion of the mini album, which is just adding the pictures in the pockets and then I'll come back to this layout in a bit. Now, since this video has been recorded and uploaded, the mini album has been given to Kath and she loved it and that made me feel really happy because you know, when you're making someone for something, you really pour your heart and soul into it. And you, I don't know, you just, you know, you want to make it special for someone and you want them to love what you make. And so she said she loved it and then she loved flipping through it. She couldn't look at it at work because we were, we were busy. We're busy. We're busy girls at work. Um, but she said when, you know, she got home that night and that weekend, she just flipped through it and a few times and she loved all the little pockets and the little like pull out panels and the interactive elements so i was really really happy about that and um there's plenty of space to add more photos of our future adventures kath so you're not gonna get rid of me so easily <laughs> I'm so happy that I was able to use up so many scraps in this mini album. Like it always makes me happy to be able to use up scraps. It makes me feel like such a responsible adult, a responsible citizen of the world to use up my scraps. And I'm also happy that I was able to use leftovers from work projects. Uh, a lot of the times with work projects, we have new product releases. So new stamp lines coming out every single week. And so once you're done with a release, you really don't use that stamp set like much, like very often, unless it's like a sentiment stamp that you can use in other projects. But what happens is that you move on to the next product line and then the next one and then you you know like there's always something new coming up ahead and it's really fun like that's a really like amazing part of my job but also um it's it's sad when you can't well not that i can't use the previous product lines but you know you're always just moving forward and looking forward and there's all these leftover bits that i have from working on samples and so i'm glad 
that those aren't going to waste, that I can use them in journals. And so, yeah, that makes me, it makes me happy to incorporate um, past product lines from my work because they're always coming out with new products. You guys should really check out their website. They've got some cute stuff. So it makes me happy to be used, to use those product, past product lines, the older product lines in my projects. Now, I really struggled throughout this whole mini album. I really struggled with decorating the pages with the pockets on them just because, I don't know, it was easy to decorate the inside of the pockets because you would just tuck in a photo here and there, but I had a struggle like decorating the outside. So those layouts, those, sorry, those pages with the envelope pockets really threw me in for a loop and I was struggling but thankfully these large doilies came to the rescue and so what I did is cut them in half well almost in half just kind of eyeballed it and then added those to um, this particular page pocket page layout in my mini album and then I'm going to layer some floral die cuts on top and really like I don't know. I think it. I think it worked well. I was because seriously, I was struggling. I'm like, what am I gonna do here? So here, I'm just gluing down these doilies that I trimmed, and also trimming off the excess off of the edges, very carefully because I feel like if you're not careful in this part, you can potentially cut the pockets on your envelope. So be extra careful if you're trimming off any excess. I've done it before, so I speak from an experience. And now I'm just going to add these Maggie Holmes paper, um, sorry, flower ephemera, which I absolutely love, and you've probably seen me use in every single video ever since the beginning of time. <laughs> I love these, and I will have them linked for you below. I've actually ran out, I think I wanna say I've bought these three times because I just keep using them so much and I run out, so it's really one of, um, it's just like a staple that I love to have in my stash. They're just so pretty and there's a lot that come in the pack and they're a really great deal and I, I love them. They're a few years old, but I just feel like they're they're almost timeless. They're just gorgeous paper um, ephemera and die cuts to add to all of your projects. So now I'm just gluing down sentiments and other random little bits. And I wanted to share a tip because this took me a while to figure out so if I can save somebody some time in in doing this it, it really does make a difference when you are crafting so the sentiment stamp that I am using so I just stamped this sentiment onto a white piece of cardstock and cut it out so it says wishing you a rainbow of happiness and I forget the stamp set that I got it from I'll try to find it for you and link it below if you really love it so I find that when I'm doing any sort of stamping whether it's uh, a sentiment or um, an image stamp that I would take out my stamps, you know, do my stamping on the card or the project that I was working on, and then I would just put it away. Now I find that it's really helpful to have a scrap, scraps of paper next to you from your stash, whether it's white cardstock or any colored cardstock, while you're stamping and working on another project to take those stamps before you put them away and stamp your scraps or anything else that you have around or just on a piece of white cardstock, just stamp your sentiment stamps or your image stamps a few times so that you have those ready to go for other projects like this. And so that's what I do with my, um, any stamping that I do at work or at home, I try to always stamp my project and then stamp any scraps that I have nearby or I'll have like a piece of white cardstock and I'll just stamp it a few times because I know it'll be so much easier for me to pull from these, um, to pull from, from those <laughs> than to actually grab my stamp set and pull it out. Like that seems so much more difficult <laughs> to me is to grab my stamping block and my ink and my stamp set to find my stamp set. First of all, it would probably take me ages. But if I have stamps, like if I have built a stash of stamps, like pre-stamped images and just have them lying around, it's, it's so much easier to include those, especially in something like journaling or journals and pocket letters because they're already stamped and you can just start working on your project right away. I really hope that made sense and that that's helpful for you in some way. Okay, so here on this particular page, on this layout, I was really, I mentioned earlier, I'm really struggling with decorating the um, 
the pages with the actual envelope openings. So what I decided to do on this page was take a bunch of sticky notes from my stash and these are mostly from the Target dollar spot, which I miss so much. It's probably one of the things that I miss most from California is Target. <laughs> so I'm just layering a bunch of these sticky notes and just going crazy, crazy hog wild with the sticky notes on this page. And I don't know, I'm not 100% happy with it, but I figured it was just something different that I could do here and still stick to, while still sticking to the color palette that I'm using, and it's just something interesting to look at. And finally, to finish my sticky note layout, I'm adding a strip of felt, just gray felt. And I did this because when I glued down the sticky notes, I didn't do a very good job of lining them up right to the edge of the page, like to where the fold was, and it looked really messy and sloppy to me. And so I figured I could cut a strip of um, fab, not fabric, sorry, gray felt, and just add a little bit of that soft texture with the felt, and also it'll help me just make that, <laughs> just make it look more, um, what's the word? Not not clean. What's the word, guys? Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm having brain fart. <laughs> Seam seamless, I guess? More streamlined? I don't know. Hopefully you know what I mean. <laughs> so after I filmed that piece of felt being glued down, my camera died. It just, <laughs> the battery died and I didn't realize it until much later. And that is the worst feeling is when you're, when you don't realize either that you're not in the frame while you're filming or that your camera has died. So this is, I took this video the next day, so this is the completed, the completed mini album, and I'm so sorry that I don't have the process, like this wasn't filmed, that's really a shame, but hopefully you can still see every page, and I didn't do too much, like I didn't have much more to do to the mini album, so you pretty much saw the whole thing, but I promise to have the base the mini album, the envelope mini album base, like just the base tutorial very soon. So I will film that for you as soon as possible. And I hope that you enjoyed this process video. Hopefully you got some ideas or some inspiration to help you with your own projects. And if you would like to see more of my crafty projects, then you can follow me on Instagram at Jeanette Lane Vlog or subscribe to my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you real soon.